Hi everyone, so here we are back again. Uh, this time, me and Ala are going to talk about point number seven, which is about the hierarchy in sport. Okay. So this is a very common uh, issue that is found when a new physiotherapist or a new SNC coach, or maybe even a nutritionist, a doctor, they start working with athletes, right? With sports persons. Where do you fit in? I mean, is there a role for you which is very clear? Or are you the one who's going to come in and make the difference to win that gold medal? So when somebody wins a medal, okay, when somebody uh, does well in a competition, what is it that was most important in that? Was it the playing? Was it the physio who did maybe the taping or the trainer who uh, made them do the workouts? Or was it the psychologist or was it the nutritionist? You know, is there really somebody who's more important than the others or is everybody the same? Now, this is what we'll try to find out and this is what we'll uh, try to get out of this at the end of this so that you now we're all clear about where we fit in as strength and conditioning coaches or physiotherapists. Okay? So I worked with uh, the Prakash Padukone Badminton Academy you know, for almost three years and got to learn a lot from uh, Mr. Padukone who is obviously a legend of Indian sport and who has been world number one. He has been an all England championship winner and has been uh, running a very successful academy for many years. And one of the things that uh, Mr. Padukone said and which struck with me, you know, and which is one of the truths of sport is that there are three basic elements of sports success. Okay, One is the technical aspect, which is about playing a sport. So if you're a badminton player, tennis player, or hockey player, then comes the physical, which is about, you know, are you fit to play that sport? And then comes the mental. Are you clever enough to use all that at the right time? So there are these three main elements. In the technical also comes the tactical, you know, where you know a skill, but can you use it right at the right time? But that still becomes something that a technical coach teaches. We need to understand where we fit in, okay, and we fit in in the physical part. Okay, This is something you have to get clear in the beginning. So, like Declan said, you know, there's technical, physical and mental aspects. Technical bit is basically what the coach is trying to teach the athlete uh, in terms of their skill and, and tactical stuff that is required for the game. So it can be something like a boxer who's a boxing and uh, a certain punch needs to land or you know needs to land in a manner so a jab needs to land a certain way a cross needs to land a certain way or a hook needs to follow something it's it's all tactical like for for one say one boxer there may be a game plan that is followed the other uh, you know for another boxer there's another game plan that can be followed so something like this this is like in simple terms this is all tactical stuff this is where as physical therapists uh, we have we should have a very little say or actually no say in in, in, yeah, in, in uh, these aspects of the game. Also to understand, like Alap said, you know, many other uh, sports professional, they do not have a say there. Okay, let's put it blank and clear. And this becomes important to understand that no matter how qualified you are as a sports physiotherapist, SNC coach, nutritionist, you could have had 20 PhDs. Okay, you could have studied in South Africa, UK, India, um, U US or even on the moon, doesn't matter. Okay, What matters is that, you know, the technical coach knows more than you because you don't have the skill that is required. Understand that any sport is about skills. Okay, It's about people who have certain skills. A hockey player has the skills to play with the stick and work with the ball. Okay. Uh, the cricketer has the skill of you know playing with a bat. The badminton player has it with a racket. So these are skills that these players, the players master for years and years from childhood. You know, some of them start at age seven. These are the skills for which they play against others and they win. Okay, and this becomes very important to understand because a lot of you know physios, uh, trainers, uh, nutritionists, they come in and they almost live in a parallel universe of their own. You know. They sort of think that, you know, hey, you know, I did that taping and that's the reason why this guy won, you know, for the competition. Or I was the one, you know, who taught them how to do a military press or a clean and jerk and, oh, you know, so that's the reason why the guy is serving, you know, faster and that's how that medal came. I've said this before as well. You play an important role, okay, but you should know how important. And this is where you have to understand that the technical skill, the technical coach's role is always superior. 
okay absolutely superior okay you cannot ever equate your own to that because uh, the medals are not given to the fittest guy okay or to the guy who had no pain okay or to the guy who's got the best nourishment or to the guy who's just mentally very sharp the medal is given to the person who wins on that particular day in that skill okay so this is a very very important point to understand so this again very simply put i think technical or tactical skill is the most important aspect of any sport whether you are a physiotherapist you are a nutritionist you are a, an snc uh, and all other you know branches that you can think of uh it, eventually we are called support staff for a reason you know we are only supporting the athletes and and the athlete is at the pedestal and below that or the first person uh, is the coach and after that there's that team underneath who, who are sort of holding the athlete together yes we play a huge role but then uh, at the end of the day it's the athlete and the coach complex that has to work together to get the medal okay to take this further okay about the technical skills i'll give you an example right so now when we talk of fitness let's assume as a strength and conditioning coach i say you know hey but you know what i make people fit i make sure that they are strong i make sure that you know they can play for long so of course i play a very important role they will because you know i train them and then allah has made sure that they taped and you know there there is done a good amount of you know releasing and he's made sure the it band is all released and everything so hey we played a role you know because he's taken the pain out i've given the person the power so am i not the guy who's made the person win so here i give you an example of you know pure fitness if you take a crossfit athlete okay somebody who does crossfit and nowadays obviously it's quite uh, popular so if you check pure crossfit athletes they are fitter than most probably any athlete in the world when i'm talking about skilled athletes okay if you take a fitness model they would be able to do a lot more things than probably any other olympic champion no when it comes we if we base it only purely on a physical aspect okay they'll be able to do lots more push ups lots more vertical jumps they'll be able to run they'll be able to do everything you know that that a uh, fitness trainer would want to then why is it that we can't just give them a racket and say hey go you know play against roger federer beat him because you're fitter mm. wouldn't it be that simple that we just get a fit guy give him a racket or give him a bat and say go you know you play you're fitter than these guys you know so here you have to understand and hopefully this example should clarify by now it should be clear if you're still not getting it you know then it's really uh, you're you're in deep trouble okay yes. so understand that is the skill which is important okay fitness is not everything the fitness is to help the skill and you might say how you know how does fitness help uh, there are two main aspects on the physical side you want the person to be fit to be able to do the skill a greater number of times and alaps role would be as a physiotherapist to make sure that the person doesn't have pain because that can be the limiting factor to perform the skill but it's all going to a skill everything right. goes towards skill right. skill is the ultimate that thing that they need to have okay and that's why they win and that's why they become champions okay okay guys so now that we are clear about the technical bit and tactical stuff uh let's come to the next aspect of our discussion which is the physical part of you know getting the athlete ready for the physical demands of the sport so here in we we will have say the nutritionist we will have the physios we will have uh, the strength and conditioning experts all will fit in this umbrella you know of getting the athlete physically ready for the sport the strength and conditioning expert will probably be working on the power and the strength aspect of the requirement of the game the physio will be working on getting the athlete ready for the next session after the you know after the wear and tear of the session the day before or say a next tournament uh you know we'll be working on a few things that you know maybe there was some hip tightness there was some uh, back stiffness that was troubling the athlete and then we want to work on that so something like that as physios we would be working on nutritionists would be working on getting the you know recovery right for the athlete but eventually like we discussed in the first bit or the first point uh all of it has to sort of you know uh, uh, relate to the the skill aspect of the athlete so just to give an example uh, say a boxer even if he's an injured boxer coming straight out of the surgery maybe his hand or arm is in the sling with some you know injury to his arm or you know elbow wherever i should still as a physio be thinking about 
what are the movements that he should be doing in the ring he would be doing in the ring as a boxer and then breaking them down into you know portions that i can still do as part of his rehab skills wins games okay it is skills that wins games wins medals wins matches okay and if you remember this you know that skill is what matters i think you can never go wrong you can't just think this is especially to all the strength and conditioning coach and physios who work on fitness don't have this feeling that you know there's some world out there where everybody has to be fit have a six pack and look a certain way Absolutely. and i have spoken about this and i've mentioned you know earlier you know even in some articles about you know in cricket this happens right you hear about how players have been not selected because they failed a yo yo test and my question is why i mean if it's a yo yo test then there's all over the country there's probably millions who'll do it you know they prepare for it and if that's all that it takes to be in the team then why should we take all those guys and it's a sad sad thing you know that players are not selected because of some random unrelated test just because as people who are the sports science guys okay we have created this whole thing of you know hey fitness is important fitness is only good if the player can use it in his sport so now that we are clear you know what is the technical aspect why it's so important and then we come in you know the physical aspect and then comes the mental aspect so now are we saying that you know psychologists and those who work on the mind they are less important definitely not you know they also have a role to play but where does everyone fit in i'll give you an example with this you know today if a sachin tendulkar you know consider one of the greatest batsmen of all time okay if he had to play okay today is probably in his late 40s you know so why is it that he is not able to play is it that he doesn't have the mental sharpness at this stage now we definitely can say that he'll be a lot more mature than when he was as a younger player right so when it comes to the mental side of it the psychological strength is definitely much more mature we all become more mature as we get older okay so he is definitely much more mature now the mental side then is clear that he is a guy who's you know got it all mentally and that's what he has and even more than what he ever had uh what is it that is stopping him from playing right now it is the physical aspect okay he has retired and most of these players retire when when your body can't take it anymore okay it is not because they stop thinking or that their mind is not allowing them to you know sort of process and do things okay they retire by what 35 40 you know depends at the age what is it that stopping them is the physical aspect they cannot play the game they cannot move physically okay and this is why i said you know sports there's the physical aspect some of them have very high physical uh, side to it like badminton and there the breakdown is even earlier okay people start breaking down a lot earlier in those type of sports some sports where the physical demands are lesser people can play more okay like uh, you see various sports you know people play for a lot later age so coming back to the example of sachin tendulkar today he is a much more wiser man much more sharper but he doesn't have the fitness side okay skills he would still have it if he just takes the bat and moves he's done something in his whole life he will still be able to play that skill but he can't do it a greater number of times because the fitness is man missing got it so the mental is stronger the technical is still there it's been there you know it doesn't go but the physical is gone at a certain age we lose that okay so now what does this tell us that mental is very important but it's can't be more than the physical part okay the physical is important because sport is about physical movement now yes if we talk of sport like chess then yes i would say the mental part becomes more important because there's no movement you know you just need to move your arms and that's it so you don't need huge amounts of cardiovascular endurance or huge amounts of power or speed okay so it depends on the sport and this is something to understand you can't have a, a approach in a way you think that hey every bit where the physical guy is more important and then the mental is secondary you know there are some sports where the mental side becomes important and that is where uh you would you know have sports like chess or um uh, snooker you know where there's a lot of patience there's a lot of touch play that is done golf again people play for quite a while okay so there are some sports where i think the mental side is very important but when we talk of power sports and majority sports are obviously that you know, when you look at gymnastics or football or you know hockey the physical aspect plays a huge role so you have to understand this hierarchy 
and where each person fits in or where each role fits in and for which sport and of course we'll be doing a more detailed talk about this in the future but uh, this is something that you know we wanted to clear the technical the physical and the mental okay to add to what declan is saying uh, we are not trying to say that mental aspect is not important by any means it's one of the most important aspects and that's why we are covering it here you know it is one of the most important aspects in the game but again there may be some athletes who just don't require that aspect you know they they have their own makeup ready for the game and they're so gifted for the game that you know they they have sorted it out by birth almost or you know by the virtue of their uh, training per se when they get to the competition venue they they just you know got everything that they need uh, and even that holds true with even physical aspect uh, when we say you know sometimes they they may not require any any assistance from our uh, and and that's why that's why again it sort of reiterates that we are only supporting whoever needs our assistance needs to have that uh, uh, but then there will be always those people who are so gifted and talented that they just are born born to play the game let's just say that you know games like Uh, shooting archery uh, will require a lot of mental support as part of their training a lot of visualization a lot of other techniques that the psychologists use and and, and it, it's a, it's a routine part of the game and that's obviously a very very important part of their game but say compare that to a footballer or a, a swimmer or a, a runner i mean it's a lot of physically demanding aspect not to say that they won't require mental assistance at some point of their career they may require it more than uh, other other times uh, it's all you know it's all an evolving uh, capsule uh, athlete uh, athlete training capsule is a very evolving capsule but then uh, at no point is the physical aspect and the tactical aspect uh, um, you know becomes less important than the mental aspect let's just put it that way uh, from from my end, i think uh, it's it's all you know uh, at different points of time the athlete may require different types of assistance but it's just uh, you know if the physical and tactical part is not there the mental part is not going to get, uh, uh, you know get him anywhere and i'll probably add to that that you know uh, say an example i'll give probably the additional example would be of a car okay it's like when we're working with a racing car mm-hmm. we the physios and the strength coaches and uh, the nutritionists you know, all of them we work on the part of the car to make it faster Okay, it's like a racing car. It's a Lamborghini. Okay, let's say more a Ferrari. You want to make this car faster. That's our role. So we work on the physical, the body aspects of the car. Okay, that is what our role is to make sure that that car is ready for racing. Okay, but not to think that you know the car by itself races and wins. Uh, one more thing I would like to add here, you know, that sometimes uh, sports physiotherapists, SNC coaches, and all all the associated you know professionals, they talk about how. we all work as a team okay we all work around the athlete and we are all there to support the athlete and you know we all play an equal role i disagree to it okay we don't play an equal role because if that was the case i would just take a guy to the gym make him fit train him on the um, uh, probably on the grounds make him work a, a lot on his cardiovascular endurance and that's it you know then he goes and wins the medal isn't it and then the physio works make sure that you know there's no injury and that's it if it was that simple then why do i need the technical coach without the technical part a sports person is not a sports person and like i said earlier there wouldn't be a difference between you know uh, any um, instagram fitness model and a sports person okay there are many of them you know who have six packs and they, they have amazing bodies and sometimes you see them you know do some of these stunts in the gyms and really looks great you know the hang on bars do all these windshield wiper moves and stuff it looks amazing what do they not have they don't have a sports skill they haven't mastered a skill to work with a hockey stick or with a, a cricket bat or anything okay so that is what is missing and i remember at one of the olympic gold crest workshops i was doing for the coaches i had given this example and there was this uh, guy who does a lot of these you know speed movements he puts ladders and he's got this long hair and he just you know runs around with his feet very fast okay and does various fast movements okay like crazy you can't even see his feet and i told him when i showed this and i said look this guy is sort of athletic an athletic trainer who you know teaches speed i said he moves faster than a cristiano ronaldo or any other footballer you know with the speed but what is what is it that he doesn't have i said there's no football there that's the difference okay he can move his feet fast without the ball and that's what makes him a non footballer 
so this is what we need to understand no matter how fast you can you know uh, do your clap push ups you can jump in the air and do hundreds of various skills okay all these sort of you know uh, very physically uh, attractive very physically sort of you know uh, visually very pleasing uh, drills you don't have a skill then you cannot compete in sport and this is the reality of it okay this, and this is why uh, you know we need to understand that when we teach where our role fits in and it is not about just making a person physically fit that is part of the deal but it has to all always go right up in the direction of skill enhancement you want to enhance skill ultimately that is what matters and to add to that i would say you know if you stick to your job if you know where you fit in you will always have a very good relationship with the technical coach if you start to take over there and think that you know i'm the guy who's coming and i'm going to sort out everything i'll be the psychologist i'll be the nutritionist i'll be everything okay oof boy good luck to you you know you have to try that so just wanted to add on this again uh, this is not to say that as part of the physical support staff we should not uh, pay attention to the skill of the sport or you know not learn the skill for the skill of the sport to master our skill as a physical therapist or a trainer so say if i know the demands of boxing badminton and those are the sport sports that i am going to work in the more i understand the sport the more i know the the body requirements the the recovery the other lack of recovery patterns that the athletes would show and the more my clinical reasoning would be uh, you know sharper in terms of administering the quick you know uh, specific Uh, things that i would have to do as part of getting the athlete ready for the next session or even sometimes right between the match or you know tournament that's why you know those those physios or those trainers are are good uh, because you know uh, who can pick out those two to three key things that if, if you have got a, even 15 minutes of time uh, you sh- you would be able to you should be able to do what it takes for you to do the job right and uh, and and that's why it's very 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 important to know the skill of the game it's not to say that you should stay away from the skill of the game and focus only on your job it's absolutely not what we imply uh but uh, you should not go there and you know start teaching teaching the coach or the athlete uh, especially when working as a team uh, most of the times things will happen like this you know the athlete would enter your arena the coach won't be there with the athlete sometimes or most times and you may happen or the athlete may start talking about the game play as part of you know just random conversations and and you may want to give some input because you understand the games you think I, 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 but then that's the time that's the time when that's the time when i i think i have learned my lessons the hard way to keep uh, that one step Uh, you know uh, away from that and eventually if you say something uh, it eventually reaches the coach and then then you are so you sort of enter the territory that you shouldn't be in what alap alap said earlier you know i i add to it that you know you need to yes learn about uh, the skill and that's very important because you need to know where you fit in physically like what's the energy demands you know which energy system is working predominantly what are the joints predominantly used you know the plane of motion you know the speed of contraction all these things you need to understand when you see that game and for that you have to spend time you have to sit down initially if you don't know about the game just sit quietly and watch Absolutely. you don't have to enter into the field showing as if i know it all you know because i've done a degree and here i come you know i know sport i'm the man who knows it all you don't have to be like that okay sometimes the most powerful thing to say is i don't know okay if you don't know about something say i don't know or you know i only know this part and that becomes i think more uh, trustworthy for the player for the coach for the parents everybody they know what you can deliver and they don't they also know what you don't know about and what's not your specialization okay so remember this you know, and we hope this helps you know in making everybody you know a, a good strength coach a good physio we are learning it's not like you know we are some masters we don't claim to be some top guys you know we ourselves are learning but we are trying to share what we know for others so that they don't make those mistakes which we made okay right. uh the next uh, point we would be talking about in the future would be about uh, uncomplicating things okay and that's going to be interesting you know we wanted to do that earlier but we said let's first clear out let people know where they fit in you know and then we move forward so we would be uh, doing that and uh, i was uh, supposed to talk about you know uh, 
how not to get fooled right that is what i had said in the last video you know how not to get fooled in business and how to avoid that i've saved that for the last okay so that's going to be the 15th point okay that's going to be about business and how to ensure that you don't run into problems financially and otherwise okay so hope this was helpful uh, do subscribe to the channel and uh, yeah keep looking forward we would be uh, posting more stuff uh, regularly thank you all right thank you guys thank you see you next time in the next video